What if you were born into a humble family, only to become one of history's most notorious figures? Let's envision this scenario. This is the story of Adolf Hitler. He first inhaled life in the quaint town of Braunau am Inn, Austria, in the year 1889. Alois Hitler, his father, was a stern and diligent civil servant, while his mother, Clara, embodied the quintessential maternal figure, loving, caring, and protective. Their household was modest, and the thought of raising a future dictator was beyond their wildest imaginings. Alois, a disciplinarian, was the dominant figure in Adolf's early life, while Clara, with her warm and comforting nature, was the nurturing force. The stark differences in their personalities greatly influenced the shaping of Adolf's character. As a child, Adolf was enthralled by the patriotic tales told by his father, a fervid German nationalist. These tales ignited the flame of German nationalism in young Adolf, a flame that would eventually kindle a devastating obsession. He was by these tales, enchanted by the idea of a powerful, unified Germany. He was unaware that this fascination was the first step towards a path of unimaginable havoc. Adolf's childhood was quite ordinary in many respects. However, his upbringing, and the stories that fueled his imagination, were molding him for a future he couldn't yet grasp. A future that would cast a long, dark shadow over the world. A young boy, born into obscurity, was unknowingly being shaped by his environment, preparing for a destiny that would shake the very foundations of the world. What if Hitler had pursued a career in art instead of politics? Would history have taken a different course? It's a tantalizing question that has sparked countless debates. At heart, young Adolf Hitler was an aspiring artist. His dreams were filled with brushstrokes and color palettes, not the sinister ideologies that would later define him. He yearned to paint, to capture the world as he saw it, to leave his mark on canvas instead of history. But his father, a stern and unyielding man, disapproved. He saw no future in art, only in practical professions, and he wanted his son to follow in his footsteps. In a bid for independence and a pursuit of his dreams, Hitler took a bold step. He left his childhood home and relocated to Vienna, the city of music and arts. His eyes were set on the prestigious Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, a place where he believed his artistic talent would be recognized and nurtured. But reality proved harsh. Not once, but twice, Hitler faced rejection from the Academy. His dreams shattered, his aspirations bruised. His artwork, which he held so dear, was deemed unworthy. The Academy's refusal was a blow that left him reeling, but it was more than just a personal failure. It was a rejection by the society he desperately wanted to fit into. The following years were filled with hardship. Hitler found himself living in men's hostels, selling postcards featuring his artwork to make ends meet. He lived on the fringes of society, a struggling artist who had been denied his dream. A rejected artist, Hitler was left with a bitter taste for society, a sentiment that would later fuel his rise to power. The path not taken, the dream left unfulfilled, the rejection he faced, all contributed to the making of the man who would later plunge the world into chaos. His artistic aspirations, the artist that never was, became a backdrop to the political monster he would become. How does a failed artist become a political figure? It all started in the trenches of World War I. Adolf Hitler, a young man whose dreams of becoming an artist were thwarted, found himself enmeshed in the grim realities of war. His service in World War I was marked by courage under fire, earning him the Iron Cross, a decoration for bravery. But the trenches were more than just a battleground for Hitler. They were the crucible in which a political ideology began to take shape. The war ended, but not in the way Hitler or many of his fellow soldiers had hoped. The Treaty of Versailles, a peace agreement signed in 1919, placed the blame for the war squarely on Germany's shoulders. It demanded heavy reparations, stripped Germany of its territories, and weakened its military strength. For many Germans, the treaty was a bitter pill to swallow. For Hitler, it was a catalyst for change. His resentment towards the Weimar Republic, the democratic government that signed the treaty, began to simmer. He saw it as a weak regime, one that had betrayed its people by agreeing to the harsh terms of the Versailles Treaty. He believed that Germany had been stabbed in the back, not by the enemy forces, but by its own government. These feelings of anger and betrayal started to shape Hitler's political ideology, one that sought to restore Germany's pride and power. 
he began to channel his frustration and resentment into politics. Hitler's rhetoric, fueled by nationalism and anti-Semitism, started to resonate with many Germans who felt similarly aggrieved. From the ashes of a devastating war rose a political force, driven by a man who had once aspired to paint landscapes and cityscapes. In the aftermath of war, Hitler found a new purpose, to restore Germany's pride and power. This was the beginning of Hitler's political journey, a journey that would change the course of history. A party born in the midst of chaos and despair would soon grip Germany in its iron fist. The German Workers' Party, a fledgling political group, was about to become the notorious Nazi Party, and a certain Adolf Hitler was at the heart of this transformation. Hitler's journey with the party began in the aftermath of the First World War. Germany was in shambles, its economy crippled and its people disillusioned. It was in this tumultuous climate that Hitler, a decorated war veteran, discovered the German Workers' Party. What began as a covert intelligence assignment for the German army soon became a personal mission for Hitler. The party resonated with Hitler's nationalist beliefs and it wasn't long before he became a member. His skills as an orator were unmatched, his speeches filled with passion and conviction. He had a talent for tapping into the frustrations of the German people and he used this to his advantage. Hitler became a propagandist for the party, using his rhetoric to spread their nationalist and anti-Semitic ideologies. His charismatic speeches drew in crowds by the thousands, and his influence within the party quickly grew. By the year 1921, merely two years after he had joined, Hitler became the party's chairman. With this newly gained authority, Hitler changed the party's name to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or, as it would be globally known, the Nazi Party. Under Hitler's leadership, the party refined its platform, focusing on the creation of a pure Aryan state, the annulment of the Treaty of Versailles, and the expulsion of Jews from German life. Hitler's rise through the ranks was swift and undeniable. His charismatic speeches, clever propaganda, and ruthless determination had transformed a small political group into a powerful force. And with every passing day, his dream of a Nazi-controlled Germany was becoming a reality. With Hitler at its helm, the Nazi party was poised to seize control of Germany. In 1934, a man once rejected by society had become its Führer. Adolf Hitler, the man who had once been a struggling artist and an indignant soldier, found himself standing at the helm of a nation. His ascension to power was neither swift nor straightforward, but it was undeniably shrewd and calculated. In 1933, Hitler had been appointed as Chancellor of Germany. This was a significant turning point in his political career. His appointment was not simply a result of his party's growing popularity, it was also due to a complex web of political manoeuvring, alliances and a deep-seated fear among Germany's ruling elite of a communist uprising. However, even as Chancellor, Hitler was not yet the sole leader of Germany. That changed in 1934 with the death of President Paul von Hindenburg. Hindenburg's death created a power vacuum. Hitler was quick to seize the moment. He merged the offices of the President and the Chancellor, effectively making himself the sole leader of Germany. The man once rejected by the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts was now the Führer of a nation. And yet, Hitler's rise to power was not purely a result of political cunning. It was also a testament to the power of propaganda. Hitler and his party were masters of manipulation using propaganda to create a cult of personality around Hitler. He was portrayed as Germany's saviour, the only one who could restore the country's lost glory. From a humble background to the Führer of Germany, Hitler's rise to power was a chilling reminder of the power of charisma and propaganda. It stands as a stark warning to future generations about the dangers of unchecked power and the manipulation of public sentiment.